welcome to Spirit Coffee Talk this week. I am Elise, joined with the lovely Jeanette and Lisa, and uh, we're here to talk all things spirit. It's been an interesting week, energy-wise. I think a lot of folks have been feeling some different stuff. Of course, as soon as I start recording, my dog is <laughs> crying at the door. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been intense, and there's been a lot coming up, I think, for people around timelines. Um, I know for me, I've kind of felt a little jumbled. Like I felt kind of like I'm in two places at once and it's not quite deja vu feeling, but it's like, I'm not, I don't, I'll have moments where I don't know where I am all of a sudden. And I'm kind of feeling like I'm standing in a couple different worlds. And so I've had some thoughts around that, but I'm curious what's been coming up for you guys. Plus the intense energy of the full moon this week. Yeah. I'm sure everybody yeah. felt that. That was a really feisty moon. Um, feisty, well, maybe feisty is not the right idea, but it was uh, in Leo, so fire sign, and really powerful and revealing, I think, and triggering for people. Um, but I feel like it also illuminated from that fire energy, these timelines, and these like crossovers of timelines. I've been noticing Spirit showed it to me kind of like there's a braid of some timelines happening right now. And as those those times come closer together or braid on top of each other, there's a lot of uh, like carryover of experiences or pieces of information. I know for me, um, I picked up this article of clothing that I had and I was looking at it. And at the time that I was looking at it, I was like, I've already done this yet. It was a brand new piece that I just gotten in the mail. And I was like, I've already done this before, but yet I was just doing it. And so it was again, these like merging and, and crossovers of these different timelines, but with an awareness that something different is going on. And I even noticed it with conversations too. I had one with my husband where it was something totally random we were talking about. And he asked me like, oh, you did this and this and this. And I looked at him like, are you kidding me? Like we've already talked about that many times before. You don't remember this? And he's like, no, what are you talking about? And it was like, I was talking to a different version of him in that moment even though it was such a simple thing. So there's been quite a crossover, I've noticed, that really amplified even with the moon. Whereas something like that could exist and then we simply just think, my husband doesn't listen to me, right? Like we, we, we can brush it off to the fact that he's zoned out and doesn't listen. Yeah, I know, I actually called about him like, do you actually not remember this? Or is this another timeline thing, right? And he's trying to backpedal like, uh. Must be a timeline thing. Definitely, so definitely timeline. You, honey. <laughs> timeline for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. It's been weird though. And I've, I've had a lot of people reaching out uh, with those different experiences. And, and also at the same time as noticing, say, these different singular experiences, those three timelines merging is creating a huge amplification on this experience altogether. It's like timesing our experience by three or however many I'm using three as this example of the braid, it's, it's amplifying it. So everything can feel really heightened, right? Even what we see in the world, reactions, um, emotions, triggers, like it seems extra heightened as this squeeze is coming on to, you know, layer these timelines on top of each other right now. So I don't know, I had a, a sense that these would last throughout the end of this month. I know Lisa, you felt it would last up into spring. So there's still a certain time to go through with this experience. What would you but guys depending, say? Depending on where you live. Like I know that it starts feeling like spring, like March 1st for me, it's like winter's done, <laughs> spring is it. <laughs> yeah. So March for sure is what I feel, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious how, um, or if you guys have gotten anything from Spirit about what we do in this time like do you guys get any intuitive messages right now if you tune in or like what is the best way to maneuver this time or to experience this time like is it a time of manifesting and choosing and doing or is it a time of receiving and observing what's happening like how do you guys feel that we work with this movement of timelines happening so close together like this meshing the sense that I'm getting is that it's going to be really individual because it depends what your timelines are doing. So the first, like, even before you ask the question, um, what was kind of coming through for me is like noticing what you're feeling 
when these things come up. So it's different than deja vu. And then with deja vu, it's like, oh, I feel like this has happened before almost. For me anyways, it's been a different, and it kind of sounds like it was for you too, Jeanette, with like the example with your husband, that it it feels a little bit different in that it doesn't necessarily feel like I've been in this exact situa- situation before, but it feels like I'm in a different world all of a sudden. Like my, I'm in a different life is how it's felt for me where I find myself and I'm like, is this what my, like, where's, what's happening in my life right now? And, and the things that I've been getting these kind of flashes of or understandings of as far as the timelines feel like they've already happened yet. When I look at my like 3d life, they have not. And so it, it's not that it's happened already once before I've been there before, but it's that it's already true and present And yet Mm. when I look around, it's like, oh, it's not, that's not what's happening. Right. And so for me, the the sense that I was getting is that it's going to depend what the timeline understandings are for me in the things that I feel are coming, there's really nothing for me to do. So it's just to notice what I'm noticing. And for me, I, I almost feel like or, or the understanding that I'm getting is that it's it's about using this time to tap into your intuition about how do I use this time? Because I think it's gonna look differently for everybody. We're at a really weird time in society and energetically where I think a lot is gonna change in the next couple of years. And that's gonna look very different for each individual person as well as collectively in different cultures and all those sorts of things, depending on where you live. Um, and so I almost feel as though it's a time of not all manifestation or not all dreaming or not all resting, but a time to really tap into your intuition, notice what you notice and trust that if you feel it's a time to really manifest and like you're feeling that pull to like create, 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 then do it. For me, I'm feeling a sense of sit back and observe and just hold space for what you notice. So that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, good call. How about you, Lisa? Um, okay. Okay, let me try to articulate this the best that I can. For some, I feel it's difficult to understand the concept of timeline and timeline jumping. So for the sake of this video, to make it almost easier to understand in a conceptual way, is picture an opportunity to live multiple experiences at once without the conscious physical awareness of actually doing so. The opportunity for timeline and timeline experience and jumping at this current stage is allowing individuals to experience multiple life experiences, karmic outplays and trauma release for the purpose of soul growth with the experience of multiple timelines, you're able to work to achieve your soul's highest good and growth in a place of time and space adjacent to earth. Right now, individuals are experiencing multiple timelines in order to expedite their soul growth so that they can continue their soul journey within the frequency that the earth is heading towards as a collective. This might be highlighted with some more than others but it is assured that each and every individual is experiencing it for their highest and greatest good. Fabulous. That's awesome. Do you know who that came through from? (laughs) Not from me. (laughs) Yeah, I do. They call it's my placers. They're my placers of light. They're my, they're my pleading council yeah I kind of figured fantastic so did that like I feel like that was way clearer than I could have because I often go off on tangents 
Yeah. But I, I, I really like how they explained it in like, like picture if you had the opportunity to live three different existences I mean, like, I want to have the life lessons from this and this and this, what would I have learned and grown from if I would have made this choice or this choice or mm -hmm. this choice? You know what I mean? What they're saying is literally we're having the opportunity on a complete higher level within our soul's ability. Cause we, we, as a soul, isn't just like the same density as you human. It's not like, okay, now we're human. So our whole is dense like a human and we're just stuck in this body. We have the ability, ability to have our experiences that is much greater than what our human body can contain. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we might experience in this life and understand, and we might not, but that's okay because it, it it's going to happen even if your, your, you know, 3D mind can, can comprehend it. And that's fine. It's no better or worse, but they're literally saying whether you think so or not, it's happening and it's happening for your greatest good. So even if you're having conscious awareness of it, you're actually growing and learning and experiencing from these multiple timelines so that your soul can take these multiple lessons and merge it into one to have you, when we talk about embodiment, being that embodiment so that we can go forward in higher level consciousness. That's mm -hmm. how I understand it. And obviously they wanted you to understand it from that perspective. I think that's great. And I think it's great that you mentioned too, that opening up to understanding these ideas is different for everybody and the level of ability to comprehend what is real and what isn't uh, simply is where it is for you. And I can compare this to, I remember a time where I came across Pleiadian knowledge or knowledge of other beings besides spirits and angels. And that really challenged my own sense of reality. It was too much. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist because to me now it very much does. And it's part of my reality. But there was a time where it wasn't because I was like, what? That was a part of the expansion process of opening up to more and more. So I love how they said like, in a sense, you don't need to understand it now, but it is happening. And you will understand as much as you can good. at each point. So like, don't stress of the things that you can't wrap your mind around. Simply notice what you notice is happening right now and make choices and do what you can with what is happening and what you are noticing and and that is the process of that opening and expansion and growing yeah yeah fabulous that's really i didn't fabulous. expect a channel to come through today I know. <laughs> before we started i was like i just need to ask for help i need to ask for guidance so when elise is talking you ask me they're like we'll do it yeah. <laughs> No, that was fantastic. That was really beautiful. Um, I'm getting to that there will be more of that. And I want to say specifically for you, there'll be more channeling. But I also want to say specifically for, not specifically, for many people, this, what the message I keep getting over and over and over is these higher levels of consciousness, Pleiadians, higher realms, whatever you're comfortable with, spirit are wanting to communicate with us, with people, with channelers, through mediums, through guides, through dream state, through inspiration, through animal symbolisms, through number signs, synchronicities. They are wanting to up the quality and quantity of communication this year because so many people are ready for more. So it's about don't get in your way of how it works or why or what this means take in what you can and take the next steps and the next steps and the next steps. And that's why there's multiple lessons and soul growth happening at once. So think mm -hmm. of the amplification of your, your higher self and the growth happening all at once. So it's like, you're getting all of this that's growing towards, and it, it, they, that's why they kept saying over and over, remind them that it is always and indefinitely for the greatest good and your greatest good. Mm -hmm. Never anything else. This is never to teach you a lesson. That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I wow. think on that note, there's always the reminder. And I think, you know, I, we've talked about this, but even I think we brought it up in like what to expect in a reading is the idea that we always have free will. And even if we choose to not align with what we feel, 
we need to do, or maybe we have nudges from intuition to make certain steps or open our consciousness or do these things. And we, we actively choose, or maybe unconsciously choose not to go down that road. The universe is always, spirit is always behind the scenes. Like, okay, let's nudge her at the next exit and see if, you know, yeah. she's open then, right? Yeah. You're never missing an opportunity. You're always yeah. being supported. Doesn't matter what's cosmically aligned. Doesn't matter, you know, num- numerology and, you know, what planets are in retrograde or whatever. At the end of the day, you know, maybe there will be subtle influences there. You're always still being supported towards your highest good. And you're mm-hmm. never doing it wrong. Exactly. If your spiritual journey, there's no wrong. So I, I often will talk to people and they'll be like, ah, I hope I do this right. Like if they have like a little bit of homework at the end of a reading or something like that, they're like, I'm like, there's no such thing literally. And that's another thing that I think people have been taught is that it has to look a certain way. And there's a lot of like, a lot of that, especially in the spiritual community, but I like cannot reinforce more how there's no such thing as doing it wrong. Like meditation, there's no such thing as doing it wrong. Like my mother-in-law, she wouldn't sit down and meditate, but she came to me and this isn't like a conversation we might have all the time about meditation, but she's like, you know what I realized when I cross stitch, cause she's like the most talented cross stitcher I've ever met in my life. When I cross stitch for hours in my kitchen, that's my meditation. I'm like, bam, like that's so beautiful because it's such a way to connect with what brings you into your highest vibration. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know what I mean? And no some people, wrong. yeah, some people benefit from uh, something that keeps their left brain busy to get into that meditative state. So like, that's why some people think, okay, well, painting can make, can be meditative music. But like cross stitch or swimming or running, like very left brain linear things can also, if they're very simple and repetitive, they keep your left brain busy. So your right brain can further open. Expand. Yeah. And bring it all in. Right. So I think that's a great example of it. Yeah. And like, what is it that you do in your life that when you come out of it, you feel expansive or you feel lighter or you feel more open. Right. Like the natural things and it, there's like a zillion different things that it could be, but just like trusting in that, that we're all here to experience it on a different level so that you're not doing it wrong and like have way more compassion for yourself right now than you do. And that's like, whether you need rest or whether you need to go for a run, like, like you said, at least everybody's experiencing it differently. But one thing I have felt overwhelming and myself included, like I have to say, is that we're really hard on ourselves right now for how much better we think we should be right now. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I should be further ahead than I am. Or I feel like, I, you know, like this anxiety thing probably should be done. I should be happier by now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like FYI, everybody's in it. Like, let's all have way more compassion for ourselves because the goal isn't to be good. Do you know what I mean? The goal just is to just be real. To be. Just to be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and be like real with yourself. What yeah. you need, what where you want to go, what that looks like. Like, and you know, man, if we all were willing to give ourselves the freedom to be that, could you imagine how much that would unlock stuff? Oh. Like if to really choose, like, for example, what do you want to do? And I can use my own example again, and I've said this before, but. I used to dance. I wanted to dance. I wanted to get back into dance when my daughter did it. But for two years, I watched the adult groups in the performances dance and I just wouldn't let myself yet. Why not? I just, I was like, no, I just, I can't, I, I can't yet. I, it, it's been so long. Why not? What about the freedom to do it? And so I finally broke that shell, gave myself the freedom to do it. And that's a couple of years ago. And now it is one of my best outlets ever. But I had to be willing to give myself the freedom to do it because nothing was holding me back except for me. I just needed to sign up. Brutal truth. That's actually how I feel right now about yoga. Oh, no way. I like teach yoga, right? Like, or I taught yoga, right? And I was like an active yoga teacher. I was teaching like at like high schools for like teams and like in studios and private. And it was like, 
I was like, that was a big part of my life. And then I had so many kids. And then like the last one, it really like, it was really, really hard on me physically. And I've had to do an enormous amount of healing and still. And so now it's almost like when I look at the studio, it's like, because it's hard for me to get back, like get on. It's hard for me to get on that mat now because I'm nowhere near what I was. And if I ever even dream about teaching again, I'm like, I'm nowhere near being able to teach because I'm not what I was. You know what I mean? It's been so long. Yeah. It's just this weird judgment, but really it's about just giving yourself the freedom to go back. At least you're a yoga teacher. How are you with your practice? Is that something that you're still like consistent with? Uh, well, not right now. Cause I just had surgery. So I had to like keep her pretty low key. The yoga was like laying in bed, um, which is yoga. Um, I, I went through that when I took my yoga teacher training, because when I was guided intuitively to take it, I was not even really a practicing student. I just one day was like, I need to take yoga teacher training. And then my brain was like, do you? It's like five grand and you don't practice yoga currently. So are you sure? And also like, don't you have to be good at yoga to be a yoga teacher? And when I took the training, I found a a training that was very inclusive of all levels of, you know, all things. And so through that, I really came to carve out a practice and a teaching method that aligned with all levels, because for me, it felt like yoga was very uh, inaccessible to a lot of people and a lot of different bodies and a lot of, you know, there's a, there's a kind of idea of what yoga looks like. Yeah. And it's, it's, it cuts people off from experiencing the magicness, the magicness, the magicalness of the yoga practice and the experience. So for me, I'm a very like basic, I like the basic, slow, chill, Really uh, yoga. Yeah. I'm not like a fitness yoga person because I've never been a fitness yoga yeah, person. Nothing. Then there's not nothing wrong with that for people who love that. For me, I want fitness to be fitness and I want yoga to be yoga. So that yeah. is where I kind of separate the two. And so for me, it kind of took the pressure off because like I've had a lot of health issues in the last couple of years with my body and that's made it, you know, if I had an endometriosis flare to teach yoga, I was like, I can barely get off the couch. Um, so that in that experience was a real practice for me of surrendering what it, I need to look like as a teacher, um, because I didn't have the choice. I had registered classes and I was having a flare where I couldn't do things that I normally did. Um, but I think it, I think that type of challenge happens for all of us in any, in a variety of different realms. It happened for me in the beginning when I thought I can't do headstands. I'm not like a straw. I don't know how to do a handstand. Who's going to want to take a yoga class from me? What if these really talented people come and I'm like, let's do child's pose for five minutes. You know, like I, I had a lot of working through to do that. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, yes, somebody does that in a yoga class, but I would just had a lot of ego fears around it. Um, But it comes up in other ways for me. Right. I think it, I think we all go through this. And I also like even Jeanette, when you were talking and uh, Lisa, the same thing was coming up for me when you were sharing too, is that the ego, the brain, that part of the brain, the ego, it gets villainized a lot, but it's there to keep us safe. And part of the resistance is like, I think, especially when we're talking about things that connect us to ourselves and our body and our internal wisdom and our joy, and ultimately our intuition, the ego is like, shit what's on the other side of that because it knows damn well that we are far more powerful and more connected and divine than we give ourselves credit for and it's like on the other side of that door is infinite possibility so the brain is like oh but what does that mean and that can feel really scary and uncertain even though it's a beautiful thing so for me i think it's just an echo of the ego of the ego just being afraid Mm-hmm. That was really an important message, Elise. Yeah. And I think, especially for everything that's coming up right now, the amount of people feeling all the tension, crisis, chaos, triggering, emotions, questions, concern on every level, as these timelines are braiding and then also kind of putting a squeeze on, we're perceiving three let's say three different realities at one time, all kind of like interconnected. There's a lot of judgment and fear and uncertainty and understanding or misunderstanding happening all at one time. 
And if we're going through hundred years worth of evolution and change and conscious growth in four years, logically to me, that says that is for our greater good as humanity. Right. Yeah. And so then if we are then experiencing three different timelines braiding together that really connect us to that greater good. And by default, that like divinity that we have within ourselves, it's going to make that crossing period or the acknowledgement that those might be possible, even scarier Mm -hmm. and more like triggering to the brain because it's big. big. Somewhere deep down, we know it's big. Yeah. None of the really big things that have happened in anyone's lives, like ours, or if you've talked to anyone, have you ever like heard anyone say, you know, that felt the good. greatest thing that ever happened to me and the best place I ever came from was staying in that box and staying so safe and not trying anything new, like said no one ever. Right. Or like and- change felt so nice. Yeah, I love the uncertainty in my life. That time period when I had no clue what was going to happen and I was so unstable, that was like my favorite. (laughs) Let's do that again, right? But at the same time, we can also say that all of our best things and our biggest growth and transformation has come from that time. Experiences. So you can't have one without the other. But yet that human brain, that ego part of ourselves keeps us in this or like tries to keep us in this state of not remembering that, Mm -hmm. but remembering the let's try to stay safe. Let's try to stay in the box. Let's try to stay like small even because expansion is uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and who likes uncomfortable, right? So it's that kind of balance where it's like, trying to have patience with ourselves in this because it's like a human experience to have that fear but also practicing surrender and and taking away the resistance because the resistance is the most painful part right and we hear it over and over and over and over yet it isn't easy so huge acknowledgement to everybody for the growing pains that this is and just to trust that the like the timeline crossing and the massive evolution we're having right now is all of us in our individual cocoon right like we are going through transformation and it is hard and it is we don't know what's going to happen like think about what's happening to the caterpillar when they're in the cocoon right they're like they what the me. f is happening right it's like a jelly blob they're like yeah. i'm not even a caterpillar anymore it's dark and it's gooey and i don't have a body yeah like things are like melting off of me right now and like i don't even know what's going on because i can't see shit you know like and then all of a sudden, like merging from it and the God can be like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think. And then at the end, be like, whoa, like, right? they don't know that that's what's happening. It's not like, okay, I'm just going to have a little map ski, right? Well, and, and, and I know we use the, the butterfly analogy lots, but like, really, if we can have enough space for ourselves to be in the cocoon right now. Well, and for mm-hmm. people who maybe have resistance to that analogy or resistance to just this idea in general of like, oh, well, yeah, nice, nice to say, but like, come on, Um, you know, think about it as above, so below universal law. If you want to build strength in your body, what do you do? You do things to work the muscle in order to build the muscle. It must tear and repair. Does that cause pain? Yes. Lactic acid gives you sore muscles after the fact, the actual process of working out and, you know, lifting the weights can feel painful. And yet, over time, that pain, that discomfort, that tearing and mending creates strength and growth. And that's like a physiological, biological fact of our bodies. So this is the same thing. It's just ethereal and mental and uh, in a- Slow and steady. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. This is a a good one. It was like heartwarming and full of love and vulnerability. And I think so many people, I really do. Like, I hope that if somebody sees this and thinks that there's somebody that could just benefit from that little bit of like compassion that we're all like feeling it, like share, even if it's like somebody just needs to hear this message today. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
and your cat. Right. Yeah, I know she's been like pawing at me the whole time. She's like, me too. Every time I talk to Jeanette, her cat shows up and talks back. I communicate with Jeanette's cat, by the way. People didn't know I communicate with animals all the time. Yeah. But Jeanette's cat and I are like, we BFS. Talk all the time. We are. <laughs> she's been wanting to get up on here. It's so funny. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Well, I think that was lovely, you guys. Um, yeah. That was lovely. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, well, for everyone watching, please do like and subscribe, share if you haven't, um, or subscribe, sorry, if you haven't. And for all other access to us, uh, to different offerings, check out avalonspirit.com as well as the Avalon Spirit Facebook group. We are all on there at different times during the week interacting, so you can connect with us there too. So thank you guys so much for joining.